Microsoft broke my camera on my computer. Play Microsoft. Anyway, thank you all for, for joining us in here today. We've got a special guest, Nick. Uh, so Nick has signed up with us not that long ago, actually, and he's been doing lead generation for a couple years now. And Nick can, can kind of you know, leave you rest assured that it takes time and dedication, but not only that, it's practicing calling your leads. So over the last couple of years, he's perfected his internal scripts to be able to effectively have conversations and turn these online leads into you know, some sort of an appointment or a transaction. So we normally have Beverly on here doing it. I know she has her approach, but it's definitely useful to be able to have, you know, alternative approaches to perhaps use, you know, one approach or another or a mesh of the two different approaches and so on. So I think Nick, you said you had about eight deals so far last year, roughly in and around there. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Uh, did you want me to put my camera on? I just can't because it says it won't allow it. Oh. Sorry. That's weird. Um, but yeah, so while you're working on that, uh, yeah, I did about eight, nine deals um, in about seven, eight months. Um, keep in mind, I did raise my ad budget to get more leads to help with that. Um, but other than that, like even if you're starting with the basic, you know, 20, 25 leads, 30 leads a month, I mean, at the end of the day, that's still like, that's still pretty good. Um, and a lot of people don't follow up. Um, and that's, that's where the money is in the follow up, right? So um, there I am. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so that's essentially it. Um, for me, you know, uh, I, I built my business on online leads. So all I really did was just keep calling people, keep going and just, you know, my goal is to contact 20 to 40 people a day if I can. Um, just because, you know, that, that's how you start building your database, planting those seeds, watering the seeds, making sure your service is good and all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I know there's a lot of people on here. Some have found success, some have not found success. You know, you, you mentioned that, you know, it's just, you just got to keep calling. Do you find that you've, you've gotten leads in the past where they've told you that they're just looking, but then you, you do a follow-up and that response is, has changed just due to circumstances or what have you? Totally. So that has happened. I'll give you a live example that happened in 60 days, in the last 60 days. I had an, uh, someone who came in in September. Sorry, I'm just thinking here. In September, uh, I talked to them. They said they were just looking. Everything was fine. No problem. So kept following up in that time. No answers, no answers, no answers. Um, by November, I touched base with that person and that person called me back and said, hey, listen, Nick, um, you know, uh, you know, this is what I'm pre-approved for. This is what's happening. They were pre-approved for 800,000. And I was like, why can't you get into a house? I, you have a budget. And this was in November where the prices are still going up, but it wasn't super, super, super crazy as it is now. Um, so I talked to her, I told her my strategies and how I would do that. Um, and then November I took her out. So I, I gave a referral to that agent cause they were under a BRA, but whatever. Um, and I'm super happy for it cause everyone should get paid for their time. Um, and what I did is I took him out that Sunday, showed him four properties, got it done. And now I'm like the best person ever. And I've already got referrals, okay. <laughs> nice. you know? So that's what you're looking for. Like these leads don't pop off until three to 18 months. So like, if you get something under the three months, great for you, you're a rock star, but it doesn't usually happen. It really depends. It's, it's, it's luck of the draw 100% because we can't control who registers on your site. It could be somebody that's looking in 12 months from now. It could be somebody that's looking in 12 weeks from now. Exactly. So we can't control that, right? So you can only, you know, discover that through the conversations that you're having and learning to handle your objections, of course, you know, people that are just looking, you know, asking a couple questions because that I'm just looking could actually mean they're planning in three months. But right totally. now they're just looking, right? So it's, it's. They're playing well, poker with their hand, right? Like, you know, uh, all you agents here, you know, you know what it is on offer day right now where everyone's just holding off the information until you're kind of near the top and then they'll let you know where you need to be kind of. Um, this is exactly that. These people have no obligation to you. They're not qualified leads. So you have to go through it. Yeah. Well, you know, I like you can't be scared. Put your favorite song on, put your favorite thing to do just 10, 15 minutes before you go, get that blood going, get your mindset going and let them know. Like for me, I think it's all about mindset. So before I call, you know, how I think about it now is I'm, I'm, my goal is to talk to five people and help five people today, regardless of that's sending them properties, regardless of that's giving them info. If you know, like that's all it is. 
Mm-hmm. Like this is relationship based. Oh, absolutely. So really you're just like the, it's a good goal to have is, you know, setting that for yourself, five conversations are going to help five people, regardless of what that is. And then you can carry on. So you, at least, you know, you've accomplished something. Now, have you progressed that at all? Have you always just done five or have you gone from like two to three to four to five or? Well, I was just giving that as an example for people, but I talk contact daily 20 to 50 people. Okay. So I'm definitely helping more than five people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. But, but I'm yeah, saying it's a good start for people small, to just to get in. Yeah, absolutely. Have those small steps to, to get to where you want to be. Um, oh, God, we're six. So did you already, so we have Nicholas here just saying that he's been registered with us for just over three months now. He's got over 60 contacts, but nothing's translated into sales. You know, what are your recommendations to firm more of these people up into sales? Patience. Like, you know, remember, like I was telling you, like, it's not going to happen right away. And right now, you know, usually these people, okay. So why I like these, these leads better than Facebook is because usually on Facebook campaigns, you're already getting people who are already working with an agent. I mean, it does work, but you have to go through so many more leads with these people. They're searching homes for sale in Pickering home and sales in Toronto, Toronto, sorry. You know, so it's just like, at the end of the day, they're searching for that. So, you know, like when we're looking for a product, let's put ourselves in, and that's what I often do, right? I put mm-hmm. myself into someone's uh, first time home buyer, someone's looking to upsize. All they really want is they're just looking for something, looking for information and looking for, you know, what they're looking for. Um, and it's our job just to connect them, you know? Yes. Nope, that makes sense. It's all about educating, right? So it's, it's focusing on the customer service side of your position rather than the sales. Exactly. Because so many agents are saying, hey, hey, uh, let's go take take a look at this property now. And then when they do put an offer or when they do take a look at the property, they're like, put an offer in right now. I work things a little different. I'm relationship based and I know my stuff. Like last year I did about 30 deals. I know what I'm doing. So I, I have a really good hold of the market. So people know when they're talking to me, it's no BS. Let me know what you want and I'll tell you what it is. That's it. Good stuff. Um, I'm not sure who's asking this. Uh, oh, I think it's the same. Uh, how many? And like, you only have sixty leads, right? Like, sixty leads is like not a lot. Yeah. So, really, in, in hindsight, when you guys are looking at like a one percent conversion rate, every hundred leads, you should have an opportunity in there, right? A deal in there. That now, that deal might not be for another three or six months from now, but there is a there is that deal in there. So it's really just continuously following up with your leads. The follow-up is where you're going to gain the business. The initial conversations sets the tone for further conversations, but where you're going to gain their trust in their business is through the repetitive follow-ups and check-ins to make sure they're doing okay. And if there's anything you guys could be doing for them in the the meantime. Um, Someone is asking, how many leads would you recommend per month? Um, right now with, okay. So a little bit about me, I usually, so I have five pillars. So my first pillar is spheres of influence. Um, my second, you know, in a normal, no COVID market, when things were enclosed was door knocking and, uh, bank days, you know? So like those two there, I can't do that right now. And a lot of people have those as lead gens and a lot of those other lead gens don't apply right now because you're kind of locked in and you can't really contact people. So right now, more than ever, in my personal opinion, especially if you're new, you need to spend money to get a database because right now it's hard. It's super hard to make that conversation if you don't have leads coming in every day, right? So, I mean, to do 200 or 250, whatever uh, the minimum is to start first and then work on it, right? Like, remember, you're not going to get busy for that. Maybe you get busy for that one month or two months, but realistically, what's going to happen is you're going to have 60 leads. You keep following with those 60 leads and more like you're, cause you're still going to get more by the time three to six months happen, you're going to be, there's going to be one week where you have like four or five of them ready to go like this. And that's the money train. Mm-hmm. It's uh, definitely, it's, it's, you're building your business for 60, 90, 120 days from now. You're not building your now business. Right. And all the people that are looking for the now business, which is like 95% of agents, guess what? I'm going to get that lead and I'm going to get that business because I'm going to keep calling. Yeah. (laughs) Most, most won't keep calling. No. 
Awesome. So let's just see if there's another. And uh, someone did have a question about scripts, but definitely once you start calling Nick, they'll be able to hear some of that. Totally. Um, now, Nicholas is asking here, how often would you follow up with leads from the time of registration? I usually wait about a day. I mean, I have Twilio connected to mine. So you get a text message going out, you know, in the first 10 minutes or whatever. And then after 24 hours, however, I find that in my personal strategy and how I'm doing my calls, I find about one or two days is good. The reason being is because like if you register on a site and someone calls you right away, you know, it's that person and you're probably not ready to talk to someone right now. And the reason why I wait is because they probably forgot what they signed up for. So when I call, that's when I hit them. Yeah, they're not they're not expecting it as far no. as, you know, yeah. And that's true, you know, when you sign up for something, you get a call. Remember, like, day. you guys need to know your scripts. You guys need to know, like, your questions when you start asking, when you have a phone with a buyer or a seller. Like, I just had a seller that came in four months ago, and it's three deals. They have an investment property that I'm listing on February 18th in Oshawa, and now they're going to sell, after I sell that one, they're going to sell their, their uh, owner-occupied and then buy. So, like, the money's out there. Oh, it is definitely. Um, now, one person is asking, just out of curiosity, how much you spend on Google Ads? I spend about like I think six hundred now. Okay. But I'm looking to have a team later, so like soon, so I might just increase that more because I know it works. You know. Yeah. No, absolutely. And then, what would you do with? What do you personally do with wrong numbers with those leads? So wrong numbers, when you guys see it online, like my screen here is lagging a little bit on the agent locator side. So I hope it's not going to be a problem. But what I usually do is you got to create labels, right? Like it's like a database. And if you don't have a database, I highly suggest you make one. Um, and once you get a database, the next part is being organized. Like you have to make sure you have things labeled. So for, for me, I put them as garbage leads. So they're not always popping up like as new calls to lead. And then I put a label saying bad info. So let's say if I have a wrong number, but a good email, uh, I have scripts that I use and templates that um, that I created that I, I put them on that. So if they have an email or even a phone number that works, I will keep calling until I get some sort of response. If it's an email, I will keep emailing until I get some sort of response. Perfect. And I have converted some of those. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Not every bad number you guys get is intended to be a bad number. Right. So you you've seen it probably time to time with the emails of your leads that come in you can spot where the error is. They, they put an N in .com instead of an M, right? Or they get the A and I right. email mixed up. You can spot that error. The, the unfortunate thing is with a phone number, you can't spot the error unless it has to do with the area code. So you'll notice sometimes as well, and if you mark their numbers as being invalid, it will prompt them to give you a valid number. But of course, you know, just having those emails, just put together a couple emails that you could use as a campaign that would try to encourage someone to give you their valid information, right? So, or at least respond to your email in one way, shape or form, right? So right. it- um, Also, you have to provide value, like you're saying, right, Crystal? Like, I mean, you can't just be an agent. Okay, so when I was calling, like before I had these products is, you know, you know how many times people, like once I internally understand my scripts, you know how nice it was when people were calling and they were saying, Nick, it's so nice to talk to you because you're not just like a robot. And I'm like, well, I basically am, but you just don't know it because I know my <laughs> scripts. You know what I'm saying? But that's the whole point is knowing where you're going to take the conversation and where you're going to lead somebody, right? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's listening. And that's where, you know, we go over having those internal scripts, memorizing your scripts, but right. having it, you know, you can tell when somebody calls you from whatever service provider and sorry, I'm just going to yeah. turn off my phone here. Oh, it's okay. And then I'm seeing one of yeah. the questions here, if, if that's okay to go at. Yeah, no, but, absolutely. But yeah, you can definitely tell when somebody is, you know, reading off a script. If you got somebody totally. that called you, you know, the way they go about their questions, you know, there's a list of things in front of them that they're just going through each one of those things. So they're never actively listening. So you have to treat it like it's just a conversation. It's just another conversation. How I kind of kind of guide people on that is what would you do in that in that situation where you're standing inside your brokerage and most brokerages will have listings posted on the window or, or what have you 
and you noticed a couple standing out front of that window staring at the listings what would you say to them go up and say, hey, right. how are you doing? I work for the brokerage. I see you staring at a listing over here. Are you interested in these type of homes? You know? Yeah. But like, the thing is, it's just being a person. Like, that's yeah. all it is. Like, yeah. for me, like when I call and you guys will see when I call, start calling is I'm like a, like, I'm, I'm like a unique person. Like I'm super like different, meaning like, you know, I say what I want to say. I do what I got to do. And people enjoy that because you know what? I'm not like, not dishonest or disgenuine, you know? And that's what I think the most important part is. And like my scripts that I'm going to share with you guys today, when you guys hear me do the live calls, they might be a little different for you guys. Cause maybe you guys don't have my personality or you guys don't have certain things, but it does work. You know, um, one of the questions I want to ask, or just, if that's okay, Crystal is, I think it's, uh, I might be pronouncing your name wrong, but, um, I'm just gonna say Mr. Khan, uh, he just says in this very hot market, you know, your buyers want to buy, but their budget is around eight fifty nine hundred, but they're in bidding wars. You know, I've been working with them for three months. I've had the same stuff, but realistically in any buyer doesn't matter from this. You have to know your market. If you know what they want is that like, if you know, their budget is 900, but realistically they want a 1.1, you got to be upfront and honest and you let them know. And if I lose them, I lose them. But nine times out of 10, you're the only honest one and they'll be working with you. You know? So I tell people, Hey, I understand you want that double car garage, but maybe you buy the single. And if not the single, maybe you get that semi that's really pimped out rather than just like going to one. But like, I really believe that once you sell, especially in this market that we don't know what's happening, but prices are going up crazy, you need to sell and buy. Don't sell and sit in the sidelines because I got a lot of sellers that are trying to sell now and sit in the sidelines. But I'm saying you're going to you're going to screw you're, you're, you're going to screw yourself personally, because yeah. mm -hmm. once you get back out of the market, it's hard to get back in. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It is, it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, for many, it's just trying to get into, into that market, right? And it's, it's your job as realtors to really educate and guide these people. You know, I have, you know, from time to time, just from doing, you know, trainings and sessions with all the different individuals, they'll, they'll call a lead that has unrealistic expectations, a garbage lead. So, well, no, no one's probably actually sat down and discussed that with them. So they don't understand why no one's willing to work with them or they call them and they never hear from them again because no one's saying, well, this is what this, you can't find what you're looking for in today's market. Totally. These are your options. This is what we totally. can do. You can, you can go into a for now home, you know, build your equity. So at least you're getting into the market and then you move into your, you know, your dream or your, everything you want home. Right. Totally. So, but you got to get in somewhere. You can't, you know, go for the diamonds when you can only afford the, well, I'm getting sellers who are saying, okay, I'm going to cash out, make my mill or whatever, and then wait a couple months. And I'm like, dude, you're going to you, have fun, but I, I, you have to be upfront. Yeah. You have to be upfront and honest and let people know, because I've been getting business because I've been honest. Yeah. Right. Like, so, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to start doing some calls just to showcase some people what it is. My okay. computer is slow. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple moments. Like when I try to slide down, it's super slaggy, you know? So I'll do my best. Please be patient and we'll go from there. Perfect. Sounds good. And for anyone that is watching, you know, we were, you know, Nick, I'll, I'll stop. Nick, you're going to click on the three dots and, and share your audio so they can hear their phone ringing. So I only have the three dots where it says more it says chat, pause, stop, or Q and A. It doesn't have a more options section for you. No. You can share your computer audio uh hold on one second all okay so who can share who can share only host or all panelists and then who can start sharing with when someone else is sharing that's the only kind of options i have hmm. let's see let me just see where did it go Trying to see, it's got the share screen. That's fine. It's nothing. In. So I'm wondering where it is. Where did it go? Maybe because I made you close. Okay, so maybe under more over here. Yeah. Uh, over here. So mute part uh, participants upon entry. Allow. So which one do I have to hit? You would do the share computer sound. So I don't have share computer sound over here. Uh, I have like attendee layout, like active speaker view. View mm -hmm. no, I don't have that. Let me just see here. Sorry about that, guys. 
Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's yeah, because mine is also being weird and where it doesn't give me that that option. Let's just see if it's in there. Yeah, it's so strange because usually I have it in here. And maybe it's because of the computer that I'm on. It's that. Yeah, because all I have is a live stream right now, which is strange. Hmm. Well, if you share your screen, it might change, maybe. Maybe when you're sharing your screen. Okay, so I'll share yeah. screen and then we'll go from there, okay? And see if that does it. Because I know it'll it'll it should pop up, but I'm just going to do this. Okay, more. Okay, maybe, yeah. Um, do you see anything over here? Because you, now you're seeing my screen, correct? Uh, give me one second. Yes. So what am I doing wrong here? I won't be able to see your controls. That's the only thing. Like the Zoom But if I do it I over here, see. right? Like if I do it open up here, can you see it? Like in the screen that I'm shared? Do you see nope. what I'm saying? Nope. I can't. No we way. can't see your Zoom controls. Yeah, so should I just try a one. call and just see what happens? Yeah, you sure can. Okay. See, this is the thing. Like when I'm trying to scroll up or down, it's like super slow. And this mm -hmm. never happens. I just think that there's a lot of, uh, let's it see. could be, there's a lot of processes like zoom might be taking up, you know, a decent amount of bandwidth on your computer and processing. Um, so that's something, you know, that you can look at to see how many process. not, you know, right now, maybe, but you know, down the road, um, afterwards you can check to see what, um, I'm just going to go into There's one of them. That is I'm going to do it like this. This is going to be a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. So I just click on this and start calling dial lead. Perfect. Let me know if you can't hear anything after the call. Yeah, no problem. Allow. Now, for anyone that is watching, I've got a lot of questions in here surrounding where the leads are coming from and what have you. Um, so this is it, you know, I know we have another group on Agent Locator called Lead Conversion. Some of you guys may be in from that one there. Um, so this is powered through Agent Locator. Hey, Kathy, I hope you're doing well. It's Nick Moretti calling. I actually just wanted to call you just to thank you so much for coming onto my website on morettirealestate.com. And I just wanted to call and just to make sure you had a great user experience and if you were able to find the homes that you were looking for. My number is 416-559-5301. And I look forward to chatting with you soon and take care. Bye. So I always leave voicemails. Some people don't, but I always do because I do get calls back. And if you're not getting called back, switch up your script. It's your script. Could you hear like that voicemail or anything or not really? I couldn't hear the voicemail. No, we could just hear you. So yeah, <laughs> there's that. And I don't know why you can't, it's weird why we can't share the audio because every time we've done this before, we can share the audio. I'm so sorry. It's probably me. No, there could be another setting. So we can figure that out. We can even do a trial one another day and figure it out. First. Yeah, for sure. Cause I want to make sure people are getting, you know, the best stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what I usually do is whenever I call, leave a voicemail, like the most important thing is, is making sure you note it down. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you call, it already comes out here and it says tries to connect or tries to contact. So that's yeah. fine. Right. So mm -hmm. now you just want to keep going to the next one. Yeah. So because you're using the dialer, I know you have your habit of uh, using your phone, but if you're using yeah. the dialer to make your calls, you don't have to re-log the call. 
you just have to totally. make the call through the dialer and save the call and it logs it for you. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, and then maybe I can share some of the calls that I have after if you guys can't hear it, because then you'll hear both ways, right? So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so while we're kind of waiting on this one ringing there, um, our ads, you have the option of doing a Facebook or Google ad. Uh, so it really depends on, on your angles. You can also run both ads. If you know how to do it yourself, you can also just connect that to your CRM. It's entirely- Hey, is this Judy? Hey, Judy, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. This is actually Nick Moretti calling. And I was calling just to actually thank you so much for coming onto my website on morettirealestate.com. Yeah, and I was actually just calling just to introduce myself and I wanted to make sure that you had a great user experience. Were you able to find the homes that you were looking for? Yeah, I totally understand. You know, nine times out of 10, whoever comes onto my website is just looking for information and just window shopping. So feel free that, to look on and, and don't feel that I'm here to pressure you and tell you to sell, like tell you to buy anything or sell. Like I'm not that type of agent. My goal is just to connect you to the right homes that you want to see, you know? So, you know, if you don't mind me asking, is there a specific area that you're window shopping or looking around in? Justin Bowmanville, nice. Are you guys currently there now? Nice. I live in Bowmanville too. I'm by, um, you know, uh, Liberty, Liberty and Longworth. So nice neighborhood, you know, can't complain. Bowmanville's, uh, Clarington in general's price point has shot up so much lately. So that's really, really good. You know, <laughs> it, if you don't mind me asking, whenever you do move, you know, whenever that is, what are you looking for in your next property? You're looking for something with like three bedrooms, two bathrooms minimum. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I know that in, uh, you know, are you only looking to stay in Bowmanville or would you consider like Newcastle or Orono or stuff like that? Can, okay, cool. Well, if you don't mind me asking, are you looking for like more traditional or uh, more open concept? Doesn't matter. Okay. Is there any specific features you want at all? <laughs> okay, no problem. Just a bigger kitchen and stuff like that. No problem. I'll do that. And if you don't mind me asking, is there a certain price range that you want to stay between? Five and six. Okay, no problem. Now, if you don't mind me asking, do you guys need to sell before you buy or do you guys just need a purchase? <laughs> yeah, no problem. I totally understand. Well, you know what, Judy, like, you know, totally, uh, I really appreciate your time, uh, you know, um, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, fix your criteria up just to send you um, what you're looking for in Clarington for those bungalows. To be honest with you, five, six hundred thousand is is really hard to find right now because the average price in Clarington is eight sixty one. But but there is a, a good area in Newcastle, um, but it's like a land lease, you know, so you don't own the you own the house, but you don't own the land. But there's really good attractive prices and there's really good stuff there that are nice bungalows, too, you know, but I'll send you what's available and, you know, we can kind of go from there. And if you see anything, Judy, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you and give you the right information. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time and thanks so much for not hanging up on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have an awesome day. We'll be in touch. Bye. So that's basically it. Mm -hmm. So, so more or less you, you kind of went after that customer service approach where you're thanking them and you know, how is your experience on the site? Right. Exactly. So then, and like, yeah, that's that it. You know, automatically, how do you find when you come in at that approach that automatically your leads, their, their walls drop, maybe not completely, but somewhat where it's just like, Hey, just want to make sure you were able to navigate. Okay. Yeah, totally. So honestly, it was just like that. Like she was a super cool lady. She was just like, yeah, I was just looking like she didn't give me anything. I mean, can I play this conversation so you guys can hear it? Probably not if we can't hear your audio. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'll share yeah. it for you guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just yeah. to help you guys out. Yeah. Um, but I just come from there. And usually what I would do is I would start already start changing. Like I would go to, you know, her, her list, save listings. So mm -hmm. I would, I would change this to property. Like, you know, you can do it, whatever, but I say properties of interest, you know, I put the areas that they're looking for. 
So she was looking for just a bungalow essentially. So I'm going to go, th- I'm sorry that I'm going fast. I already know this. I know yeah, my product, so I know yeah, where it's going to be. Yeah. It's not about the, uh, the how do you know, the system. It's how are you talking to these people? <laughs> exactly. Right. So I know she said bungalow, but I'm going to do bungalow offs, bungalow raised. And just to see, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, realistically, she's, uh, she probably has to sell her house, but she's holding her cards tight. But remember, the first conversation is just me getting my foot in the door. And then I've already planted the seed. Hey, look, next time I call, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just letting you know that I'm just going to check in on you. Like, mm-hmm. that's it. No, no? absolutely. And that, uh, and no one's going to get mad at that, right? So, no. and remember, like, they came on your website and they registered. And when they check mark that box, that's giving you authority for them to call them. And don't be scared saying, like, oh, I'm following them. Like, it's either you want to make money or you don't. That's how I see things, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, for this specifically uh, that you talked to, what would your follow up action be on her? For somebody that's just looking, she's kind of like, you know, wishy washy a bit, but she kind of knows what she's looking for. Her prices are not realistic for the most part. Uh, right. When would you when would you follow up with her? So I'm sending her an updated criteria now. So usually after the call, because it's fresh in my mind in the conversation. I mean, some people go on to the next call and then do this all after, but I like to do it fresh. So yeah. I'm sending this to her right now. So then I'll call her in like two, three days because I'm not trying to be pushy here um, mm-hmm. unless she reaches out to me first, just saying, hey, you know, it's Nick again. You know, thanks so much for the conversation. Um, I just want to just reach out just to see how that list of homes is going for you. Is okay. there anything that you want me to change or alter? Remember, customer service, customer service, because mm-hmm. everybody loves to bitch. Sorry, I don't know if I could swear, yeah. but everyone loves to, um, you know, complain. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so people will always tell you everything. Yeah. You know, let them complain if they need to and, you know, respond with a smile on your face. Totally. But that's a good lead, though. Like she's looking. She's not ready yet. No one's probably talked to her yet. She liked my conversation. And like I could have kept her on the phone for longer, but I didn't want to. All I just need to do is just figure out what she's doing get off the phone. Cause it, you have to make it like an easy thing. You don't want it to feel like every time they're answering, it's like, Oh, I got to be on the phone for 15, 20 minutes. Cause they're not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. It's, it's quick and easy. Cause say there's like some chatty Cathy's out there. That's for sure. Where, you know, you call them and you can't get them off the phone because you're the first voice they heard in the last three days. And you know, hundred <laughs> percent let them go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I know some great, great point is there. We do have um, a couple of questions just around um, everything. So if you have any suggestions on gaining exclusivity with buyers, so if you come across those situations where your buyers are, you know, they're, well, whatever agent finds me the house or they're not willing to sign a contract, you know, buyer agreement with you. Perfect. So I'll this is what I'm doing. Me. Yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, Crystal. <laughs> so this is what I do. Realistically, when it comes to buyers, it's a touchy feely thing. Usually my, my, um, my script that I say is I'll take you out once just to see if we're a good trial. And then after that, then you're signing up BRA. But now with everything being super competitive and people not being honest still, what I've been doing is I've just been letting people, okay, great. You saw the house that you liked. Awesome. You want to book a showing? No problem. Now this leads us to the next part, you know, just before I book a showing, I, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to sign some paperwork, just saying that we're committed with one another. Um, and then we can go from there. It's a six months contract. If you don't like my service or you don't like what I'm providing, I, you're more than welcome to get out of the contract. However, you're going to love what you're doing and we're going to lock down the house of your dreams. You know, like I make it easy. Like, that's the thing. Like if you start making it awkward, they're going to know what's awkward. Like, remember, no one knows how things are supposed to be approached, right? Like they're just a customer. It's not like bell where you go into bell, you know what they're going to ask you all these scripts, you know, you got to be that person. Yes. No, that makes a hundred percent sense. Really is. It's just kind of, and I think that there is that, that, that hesitation for, for many agents, just even asking that question you know, I could relate to it just even with the, you know, asking someone for money. Isn't that like the, the most awkward thing where you got to ask someone for money? It's very uncomfortable to do that. Right. But so what are they really asking? Like really and truly, you're not paying me out of your pocket. You're paying me after we find you the house of your dreams. And right now there's like 10, 15, 20 offers to get that house. So you can use a 1% agent, but guess what? Have fun waiting a year. And guess what? That thousand dollars or a million dollars purchase price you're looking at is now 1.2. Have fun. 
and I leave people, I drop them. But you know what? Yeah. When you're upfront and honest and you're okay to lose the business, they come back and they want to work with you. Yeah, that shows your confidence, right? And they're like, oh, this guy wasn't kidding around. A hundred percent. Oh, I'm getting what I pay for here. It's always like you get what you pay for, right? But uh, it's free on the buying side. So I don't understand oh, why know, everyone's squawking. It's, well, it's free, but then they want, you know, they're going to list and they're going to get a discount on the listing if they buy as well, or they're giving buyer rebates back, right? Like, so if, if people are having troubles with that, it's scripting and your confidence level. That's yeah. it. It's And you know what? A buyer rebate, someone had a good, I was in a, in a Facebook group and she did it net, you know, that percentage because a lot of it do it like a whatever percent rebate. Yeah. And she did it on the actual net of the commission. So after the brokers got paid, after, you know, whatever, not including GST or HST, it was like the net. So it literally worked out to be like $60. So she's like, spin that at them. So what's your purchase price? Okay. So the commission off that you're, you're literally getting, you know, $60 or $50. Totally. That's your rebate that they're, they're totally. looking you in with. Right. Totally. So, but people don't so see that. I right they see yeah. whatever they they're like oh the house is 500,000 you know and i get you know 1 2% back you know they're thinking on the sale price not on the commission totally. so so especially in this market i don't know if anyone else is on this conversation has been experiencing this but sellers are getting really greedy really really greedy Meaning like, uh, you know, like I'm a great agent. I tell them where the expectations are, but then when offer day comes and they see what are selling around them, their expectations are higher. And it's BS because at the end of the day, right now, who can make like three to half a million dollars in one year? You know what I'm saying? And all I'm doing is I'm going to get you the price that I want, but this is my fee. And when you go buy a Rolls Royce or a Porsche or a BMW, do they even give you freaking car mats with it? No, you got to buy that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And they're, they're not even giving you a discount on the price. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, like I, I, I've, I've been a lot into that, but you know, I let people know if you want someone who, who's going to be honest, give you the right information, make you money and get back to you in a relatively quick time. I'm your guy. If not have fun with a 1% agent that you're going to pull your hair out and leave 50 grand on the table. Well, I'll make you a hundred. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. You yeah. know, having those, those scary conversations. Well, it's, yeah. And then the, it's that confidence, right? So being able to be firm and, and confident and because you practice what you preach, people will respect that, right? They probably totally. come a lot of people that are pushovers and they don't know how to handle those type of situations, or they're just very uncomfortable situations, right? It takes practice and, you know, not afraid to lose the deal. If you don't totally. have that fear of losing it, then, then your confidence level, like, you know, I can do business you change without it. you, that will also flip that buyer, that seller's mindset as well. Cause this guy knows what he's talking about. He doesn't even care if he gains my business or not. Um, so surely he's not pulling me a fast one on whatever it may be. So, and it's really, again, it comes down to educating your leads, right? So yeah. it's kind of trying to educate them, whether, you know, they're a buyer or a seller, it's educating them on whatever it is that they're uncertain of. And one of the biggest things that anyone in this industry will do or common, I should say, is forgetting that the consumer doesn't understand real estate nor the process like we do. They just think, well, they come, a realtor comes, takes pictures, puts a sign in my yard, or they open the door and show me the listings. And, you know, they write up an offer and they make all this money. They don't understand the process. So it's your job to educate To break them. it down. And, and make it like crystal clear for them the best you can so that they're making a sound decision and a sound investment. And that's totally. the bottom line. And they have to feel totally. confident in what you're telling them and that's your job and what you're doing. Um, and you also have to feel good too. Like, you know, like I've never done a 1% or anything like that, but I can tell you if I did do something like that, I would not feel very good about myself and I wouldn't even want the listing. So like, you have to know like what's worth your time and what's worth your energy, you know? And I'm not saying like, if, if you need to do that, Hey, totally cool. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to start making more money per hour, you need to control how much, how much money you make on per deal instead of doing quantity. Yes. Cause it's going to burn you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will. know, you could do a hundred deals and make so much money, but if you only did 45 doing it properly, yeah. I mean, you save time, money, and you get family time back. Mm-hmm. Now that actually kind of goes into one of these questions here is someone's asking, you know, what time of day do you make most of your calls? 
So I call every day. I usually like, I'll try to call every day. Cause some days I have listing appointments, my listings going up buyers offers, buyer showings. But usually what I'll do is I'll usually get up on, in the morning. Like I'll call from like 10 30. I like to start calling around 10 30 uh, to 12 or one or whatever. And then some days I might, the next day I might just switch it up to do it in the afternoon, evening. It's really ultimately like, that's why I love real estate. It's about it's about how we want to control our day and our time. So I do it whenever I feel the best of talking to people. So usually that's first thing in the morning after my espresso or something, or like mm -hmm. after in the afternoon, after I have my mo momentum in the day, dealing with things, you know, these are the things mm -hmm. that I do. Cause you want to feel good when you're calling. And then, so that's, that's great. And then, uh, so that's kind of like your schedule then. So you allocate, I think we discussed this roughly, you know, an hour and a half, two hours a day to work your database and, and build your future pipelines, correct? Totally. I would do, I would say about like um, 20 to 25 hours a week, but people should be doing that to lead gen anyways. Like our job as real estate agents is to lead gen, write contracts, negotiate terms and sorry, negotiate terms and close the deal. Like that's all, all that other stuff, like paperwork, whatever you do it to your admin. Yeah. You, well, you can, yeah, unless you're like in a crunch time for an offer, but you know, a lot of stuff. No, but like I, I, I give things to my men all the time. It's not about that. It's about focusing yeah. on what you need to do oh, to make money. You need to do. Absolutely. No, a hundred percent. And like committing to it. Right. So it's, it's picking that time a day, even if you only have 30 minutes or you only have an hour, or maybe today you have three hours, but it's time blocking yourself. So it's, it's learning to not always be available and to drop everything you're doing for, you know, a client. Just guarding. It's guarding that we, time. We That's your time. That. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, let me just drop what I'm doing. Okay, we'll go do this or whatever, even though you had a set appointment for yourself to do something, right? So again, if you're not always available for them, that'll also bring confidence in you that you're, you're not just like, you know, dropping everything you do every single time they call to go help them, they understand that you have other clients and that you're busy. They start to respect your time as well if you set your boundaries. Totally. Um, I, I usually tell people I'm in an appointment because people understand that appointment is better than anything. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people understand when you have an appointment, it's an appointment, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been telling people. And, you know, it is what it is there. But at the end of the day, like, you know, this, this two, three hours, one hour, whatever you're doing for your, like contacting people, that is your business. Like people like need to start understanding that that is your business. You choose not to do that. You are not getting leads coming in and you might be doing well, have 10 closings, whatever, whatever. But let me tell you when all those closings done, it's going to take time to get the other closings happening, especially with the limited inventory right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, a couple questions here is your scripts. Your scripts are all internalized, aren't they? Basically, For sure. I can do it practicing. with my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, it's just like practicing. And really, you guys, like I've done it because I've been in sales here. I've been in real estate. It's just the practice of repetition. It's you have that, you say it, this works, this doesn't work, right? And you're tweaking it. How long do you think it took you, Nick, just with trial and error? to master kind of where your scripts are at six today. months six months because i'm a salesperson i've been in sales for so long and for me i already know what i need to say it's like how do i provide value how do i position myself differently and how do i talk people like normal people you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like that's the thing right it's just treating people the same you would treat yourself mm -hmm. um you know and um i just think regarding back to the time blocking if you choose not to do it you're choosing not to grow like for me, like it's all about growth and people in this industry who are making millions of dollars is because they're growing as a person. You can't be like a very limited person and make that money. Like you can, but it's very rare that that happens because this is a relationship business. Mm -hmm. If people don't like you, they're not going to refer you and they're not going to use you again. So then you're going to just be calling people on the phone all day. The whole point about real estate is building, building relationships for 10 years, 15 years, and then letting everyone come to you. Mm-hmm. Right. So but in order to do that, you need to do like 50 to a hundred deals a year, <laughs> you know, it takes a while to get there. Right. You yeah. see those people that they don't even have to really put much effort into their business. And it really no. depends on everyone's lifestyles, right? Some totally. people are happy doing, you know, one deal every month or every other month. Others need to have multiple to keep up their lifestyle, the things that they're, they're used to. Right. So you got to put in the effort so you guys can all retire early. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you like, you know, we didn't, as hard. You get to pick we didn't come in totally like I didn't come into real estate to make a hundred or $200,000. I came to make millions. So, I mean, like that should be everyone's mentality. Absolutely. It changed my life so fast. And I mean, that's why I'm still doing and giving it 150% of what I'm doing today, because it's such like an awesome career. If you really love what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. I love what I'm doing. And the best part is, is like, I'm so scripted that I only need to really call three people. And I really have business today, you yeah. know, like, mm -hmm. because when I find out they're selling, I'm going to find out what their address is. And then I'm going to, I already know my market. So I already know where it's going to land. So like, there's not, it's not just the script. It's like the whole shebang. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. That makes, that makes sense. So let's just, let's do a, see if we can try another couple leads, get you on the phone. Yeah, I'm down. And no then, worries. I'll call yeah, Sandy. We have, we still have some more questions we can go through. Nonetheless. Sure. Sure. I'll call another two or three more. See how that goes. I'm sorry that you guys can't hear. I feel like so Yeah, bad. we'll do it after Nick. We'll have to run through and see. Um, the speaker. There should be someone says in the audio settings, bottom left, there's a button that says share audio. So audio built in microphone. Cause I'm using my AirPods. So. But that's, you know, that's fine. Cause usually I use a headset, right? And I'm making calls. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Here. I just want to make sure it shows that everything is coming to the, to this. So, um, okay, we'll just try it out see what happens. Sounds good. We'll know when it's ringing as well. Cause you can hear it ringing if it was ringing. Can you hear it? No. Oh. <laughs> Hey, is Sandy available? Hey, Sandy, hope you're doing well. It's actually Nick Moretti calling. Um, I just want to actually thank you so much for coming onto my website, almoreadyrealestate.com. And I just wanted to make sure you had a great experience. And I just wanted to connect just to ensure that you found the homes that you were looking for. Uh, my number is 416-559-5301. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. Feel free to call or text me whenever you're available. Thank you so much and stay safe. Bye. And I do get a lot of calls back from that, believe it or not. Lay a, I don't even yeah, know how to pronounce great. his name. Lay. Lay, yeah. Let's see. Hi. It's the silent letters that get you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it doesn't matter in which language it is. It's the silent. Totally. So this number doesn't look like it's in service. So I would go call wrong number number not in service and then what i would do because right now what you need to do is you need to make sure you label everything right like that's how you're gonna be organized so i would put this into garbage but then all my labels that i set i set so many as you guys can see i would put garbage info bad info just so i know because like when i look at bad info I, bad info is that if i have one of the right information you know what i mean yeah. so then now that I know that they do have a right email, so I'll go to the email. Okay, they're looking. So then I'll drop them one of my templates that I've already used. So I will use, uh, you know, one of these ones. And then I'll just send and see if I get a bite back. Like, that's all it is. It's, yeah. And, and so you, when you're using your tags and, and creating emails and what have you. So tags, essentially, we do have some that you can use absolutely we do have uh the ones from beverly rough roughner there so you can always implement those but always do what's going to be best for you um and name your tags that way right so it's whatever is going to be the most effective in how you run your system rather than what we're telling you and how we're telling you to do it totally agree mm -hmm. um and another you know pro tip over here is looking at this so over here is like when they, when I last contacted them, which was five seconds ago, shows how many calls I did, how many emails are getting sent out to them and what emails are, and then how many text messages and what it was, right? So mm -hmm. that's important because this is a great way to keep in contact on, you know, how much time you're touching base with your client. Um, I usually, after I call everyone today um, that just came in, you know, recently, I will usually just touch this, use this activity. Yeah. My computer's a little slow. So one second. And then I would actually, I would actually organize it based on who came onto my website 
um, like the earliest, like as, like in the last couple minutes. So then I start calling those people because those are the people that are looking, right? And mm -hmm. my goal is to keep, because everyone that gets a join through you guys, they get like a, an assessment of like, you know, how many people are returning your website, yada, yada, yada. So my goal is to look at that. And I started at like 9% or 8%. And like seven months later, I'm at like almost 40% returning people, which is huge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then why I'm doing this, because now I'm seeing who's been in my, my website in the last hour, right? Mm -hmm. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on one. So it's easier for me to get all this stuff going. And then, um, yeah, then I just call these people and I just keep going, you know? going through so you, do you this, do this a last already, contact call or anything like that or you just kind of say hey they were active i've already talked to them. yeah they're active and like i know some of these people so i'm just picking and choosing which ones to call because mm -hmm. i've already been in touch with these people okay okay i'll call this one sure. so this is somebody that he's already made contact with guys yes Hey, is uh, Denise available? Hey, Denise, how you doing? That's good, man. It's actually Nick Moretti calling. I just want to thank you again for coming onto my website on moreddyrealestate.com. And yeah, and I just want to make sure you had a great user experience. Were you able to find the homes that you were looking for? Sure. Okay, I'll call you at 6.30 tonight, if that's okay. My pleasure, take care, bye. So some people I like redo the script again because some people might not remember me, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, I do it that way. So what now, so this gentleman told me he's at work. So I would go call, talk to lead. Lead was at work, call back at 6.30 today. So I would do this, save, go to task and then make it so I can get that pop-up follow-up call follow up and then I would just go Have over you here use the Google integration so that you're getting those notifications in your calendar I yeah I sometimes I manually put it in um but it just depends right like usually I try to do automated so today's 10 so 6 30 and then now look I got a lead to call back at 6 30 and wants he wants me to call him back mm -hmm. so awesome yeah perfect you want me to call one more and then yeah call one more and then we can hammer off a couple more of these questions and you guys we're going to be doing this in alternate weeks or alternate yeah alternate weeks <laughs> to the, the beverly so basically once a week we have a live dialing session whether it's nick or beverly two different perspectives right so it's it's always great to have that i agree Hey, Don, hope you're doing well. It's actually Nick Moretti calling. I just was calling to say thanks so much for coming onto my website. And I just want to make sure you were able to have a great user experience and able to find the homes that you were looking for. My number is 416-559-5301. And I look forward to connecting with you. Um, feel free to call or text me whenever you're available and have a great day and stay safe. Bye. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. I mean, it doesn't look like fun, but it is like once you yeah. start talking, to people, you know, <laughs> it's just hammering through your stuff, right? You just hammer yeah. through all 100%. Um, so I'm going to a couple more questions here. I'm just going to have this pop up so it's larger. Uh, what other pillars do you have? So Larry Kaplan's asking, you know, besides your sphere door knocking bank days, I assume Google PPC, what, what are, what are your other pillars? That you're so using? I like, Great question. I like to have two on like two hitting the, the pavement. So going out and finding people. And then my mm -hmm. three are all like kind of like coming to me. So my two going out was bank days and uh, door knock, door knock, you pick your area, you start door knocking. 
uh, bank days, I worked at a specific bank location and I got in with the management and the management just really liked me and they just keep referring me deals, which is great. Um, my other three are spheres of influence, online leads, um, spheres of influence, online leads. And um, like, I have a lot of like groups. So I guess that would be spheres of influence, but I try to partake in a lot of like, you know, different groups to, you know, expand your portfolio, right? And your contacts. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So Ahad Rashid is asking us how to get an alert from task if you're not logged in. So Ashad, you or Ahad, sorry, you have the option of in your user preferences. So in the top right hand corner, if you pick that little silhouette of a guy there and go to your preferences, you'll see an option for integrations there and you can connect your Google account. When you connect your Google account, you can opt in to have your tasks show up as calendar events in your calendar. So that event, for example, for Nick at, at 630, if his Google integration was there, it would actually show in his phone and his Google calendar, and he would get that push notification that's typically about 10 minutes before the event is due. Um, so that's essentially how you would get alert if you're, oh. if you're not logged in. Um, and check out emails. Where did that go? Keeps. And I recommend getting like when you're calling, I rec like I have this little like wooden pen that I just like fidget with. I recommend getting something to fidget with because it's going to make your calls a little bit better because you're not just going to be mentally like, uh, mm -hmm. like you're going to be moving a little bit, you know, just doing whatever. Or if you have, you know, you had your earbuds in uh, having something that doesn't make it so you're glued to your desk. So if you're in a conversation with someone that you have the freedom to kind of move to walk around, around a little bit and, you know putter, look at the window, whatever it may be that, that you're doing just to kind of occupy. So, you know, being stuck in, in, in a desk or at a chair for an extended amount of time is not, not fun. So I agree give yourself that freedom for sure. Um, uh, there is no actual copy or access to script to Sheen. This is all an internal script that he's done just through practicing calling his leads. Again, it just takes, you know, trial and error um, trial and error yeah. trial and error and it's it's not even as much of an error as you kind of give to yourself right we judge we're the, the, the biggest judge of ourselves um but one thing that's great with the the recording and the twilio on the system is use that for your own good listen back at the calls that you had and see what you could have said differently how could I have spun this? What question should I have I asked when they gave me this response, right? So it's just self-growth really at the end of the day and kind of look at what you're doing, but it's practice. You'll learn it just by picking up the phone and calling what works best with your leads and what information you need to get to be able to effectively follow up uh, with that person and how you can be helping them right now. Um, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, and then you get to see what you hear yourself. So when you're asking these questions, you get to see if you're asked, you sound a little aggressive, a little soft, you know, and you get to figure out where, where you need to like, you know, improve, right? Mm -hmm. No one likes to make mistakes, but at the end of the day, the more better, the better you get in this, the more money you're going to make. Oh yeah, absolutely. If, if you're just like, you know, I bet every single one of you have had a call from somebody that was just really good at their job. Totally. doesn't matter what industry they could have been trying to sell you something they could have just been making sure your experience was okay whatever it was there was always going to be that one person you you experienced that was really good at their job so it's kind of looking back and what that person did that made you think that right I agree. it's you know there's there's one i know sales guy that i talked to I don't know how many years ago, probably like four or five years ago now. And he was phenomenal on the phone. Like he just, it, it was like, he could keep you in. Like he kept having it's a hook. hook. He, kept, yeah. he kept having a hook, but it wasn't a pressure hook. It was more of like a question. You want to know more? That made you think <laughs> about your response, yeah. right? So it was like, man, and I told him, I said, you're really good at your job. Um, because yeah, there are definitely people out there that, and, and you know, it's, if, 
it's it's kind of going back to how did that make you feel or that customer service person how did that make you feel right it's, it's just making people feel welcomed and giving them that confidence and in, in, in essence you're going to have that confidence you know it's just like having conversations with strangers it's it's kind of nerve-wracking but i agree um you know you're you're saying the word this you know it's kind of like social media we can all comment on posts and get into riffraffs or whatever on posts right. but we're hiding behind typing right um so it's a little little bit different but kind of kind of the same where it's you just gotta just not think too hard about it just go with yeah that. and remember there's only a limited amount of objections so if you just know your objections then you're going to be good anyways right mm -hmm. and if you guys want to know a script uh, uh, where i started when i first got into real estate so i'm six years full time now so when i first started i went to mikeferry.com because they have a lot of free buyer scripts and seller scripts so this is a great place to start internalizing your info mm -hmm. absolutely uh <clears throat> but yeah, other than that, it's just getting on the phone, calling, making sure you guys do it. Um, and you know what, once you're good at it, you, it, it's fun. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't have to walk into the cold right now. Um, you can sit in your house and just call, 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 call. Like, I mean, that's it. If you want to make so much money, like the next month, all you got to do is lock yourself in that room and make it five hours a day and just keep calling. Well, Nick, what happens if I don't have enough leads? Well, be creative, figure it out. Everyone has a following. Everyone has people that they know, mm -hmm. right? And like, Build there's people website. that you that you know that are looking for a house, but they haven't told you yet. And you haven't right? asked, right? Not everyone's so gonna like, come to you. There's deals everywhere right now, you know. And then the hardest part, like, so this market's a little bit harder because there's two parts to it. It's a get the client and b get the deal. So a when you get the client, that's half the battle. But now since there's so much competitions they're you know like you're going up 10 15 20 offers and some people don't want to get a firm off like some clients don't want to go firm or if they're winning less than 20 percent, they can't go firm because they have cmhc so yeah. like that's where you need to start figuring it out and like you know letting people know listen i know you want that a home your a list but guess what you're not getting your a list unless you you know borrow some money from your parents or you 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 know like have some drug money on the side i don't know what to tell you you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i just tell people this and like it's funny because how i'm talking to you is how i talk to my leads and yeah. you know people want a real person like people well, want to laugh like yeah i'm a funny person so my goal if i can get a little chuckle or a little something i know we're good and i got you you yeah. know what i'm saying it's finding it is too, it's bringing those walls down, right? So if you can get them to laugh, their walls dropped automatically. Um, if you, and it's also Nick, and I'm not sure if you've done this is, is using like their background noise, right? So if you hear dogs or kids or they're, you know, they can't talk because of whatever, it's acknowledging that and letting them talk about it. Oh, like, like you know, how many kids do you have? Oh, how old are they? Oh, like, da, 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 da. Oh, they have totally. a niece or a nephew, that same age. You know, it's just kind of having a convert. Then it just turns into just a more comfortable conversation for both parties. Yeah. Their walls are dropped. People love talking about themselves and their families and all that, you know, glorious stuff. Um, so let it happen. Right. And, and, you know, stop focusing just on the bottom line, just enjoy the conversations you're having. I agree with you. Right. And it's just stop being scared and start being bold. Like, I mean, you know, if you want to start making some changes in your life, you can't do the same things to change, right? Like you have to do different things that are going to make you uncomfortable to do mm -hmm. it, but we're all doing it for a better life, for a better lifestyle, better something, more time, like, you know, so, and I find too, like when you have back, background noises, so I have a, a, a Yorkie. So sometimes he like barks in the background and like, I'm on these live calls and I just go, you know, sorry, that's my dog in the background. And nine times out of 10, they have a freaking pet. So like, I oh yeah, I totally know what it is. And then you start going, okay, what, what kind of pet do you have? I have a Yorkie. Like, you know, and now you're building a rapport, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just going out there. Don't be scared to talk to people. Like our job is to talk to people. To, uh, with respect to your your texts that go out, you're using the automatic texts that go out? Yeah, and then I made my own SMS templates, but some of them are really going to go like, you know, hey, it's Nick Moretti. There's some new inventory. Did you check out my last list or my, did you check out my updated list? There's some new homes on the market that matches your criteria. Let me know if you like any, like stuff like that. Or are you still looking or, you know, like you just got to like stir the pot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely.
Um, awesome. So we are really, we've got people, a couple of people looking for you about mentoring or asking about that. So Nick is a licensed agent, hundred percent. So um, just, just do a Google search on it. Yeah. So follow me on, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, go for it. My apology. Go for it. Uh, follow me on Instagram or any real estate and then ask me whatever questions you guys have. Super yeah. simple. It's, you know, it is. Yeah. So but agent locator is, works last year. I made six figures just from agent locator. So imagine if you could just make one of your pillar six figures and then you have other pillars that you can make oh, another absolutely. six figures on. Right. It's, it just keeps going, man. It's, it's yeah. Exciting. And, it's exciting. And a really, yeah. And a really good tip that I think crystal and um, all the other reps that uh, I talked to, I mean, my experience at agent locator, and this is no reflect and crystal hasn't told me or anyone like, this is just my personal opinion. Yes. You know, some things do happen, but at the end of the day, it's, it's how they, you know, things are always going to happen in life, but it's how you're going to resolve them. Right. Like, you yeah. know, uh, agent locator, I, they've always helped me out. They've always given me the best advice. And I think one of the best advice I got was, um, every time you do a deal, put another hundred or 150, $200 in your ad budget. And that goes so far. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, use, to, use it to grow your business, right? right. So take like, some of it and grow it, throw back into it. Recycle the that, money, right? Mm -hmm. Recycle the money. Don't think that you're taking it. Oh, I saved another $60,000. I can buy my BMW. No, you're thinking about, oh, I made another 60. How can I make another 120? And how can I spend my 60 to get a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars? Right. Mm -hmm. So like, that's how I think. Right. And, uh, I'm sure all top agents think like that too, you know? I can imagine so. Well, awesome, you guys, we are doing this. Uh, so the next session will be in two weeks from now with Nick. Uh, this was being recorded, so it will be up on our YouTube channel shortly, as well as it is in Facebook clients group as well. And yeah, so we'll be seeing Nick again on the 24th. Next week is the live Dallas with Beverly. So this week, Nick was calling his, uh, like, calling his clients just because he was new and because he is licensed, we weren't too sure on how people would be of acceptance of him and especially jumping into the back end. Uh, Nick is a great stand-up guy. I can confirm that he's not going to you know, steal anything from you there. So if you guys are interested and want to have Nick on our next session and hopefully we get that uh, the audio work in there, have him call your leads or some of your leads, just shoot me an email. It's crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L at agentlocator.ca and I'll put you on that list so that uh, we can get things going. Totally. Awesome. I, and if, if anyone knows any, uh, needs anything, I'm just putting my Instagram thing at the bottom there. Feel right. free to reach out. Um, honestly, I have my own leads. I'm not worried about your leads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So all I want to do is just to make sure that I can help people out. And, you know, we're all in this together as agents. So, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. have fun with that. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks again, Nick. And thanks everyone for joining in with us today. And we'll see y'all again soon. Totally. Next time I'll have my, uh, my, my mic open or whatever. So next time you guys can just, we can just do a half an hour of just live calls, just, yeah, no, just going absolutely. through it. Just calling. So it's, what's great is when we can actually hear the audio, we can still I know, talk I'm sorry. until somebody like, answers. I know I'm sorry. Know when to stop talking. Right. So totally. Yeah. It's all good. It's the first one. So there's bound is not, you know, bound to be completely smooth, a little bumps, but otherwise it was, it was great. I'm sure people learned a lot and are looking forward to the next one. Can I share like some of the, one of the, one or two of the calls that I actually got someone on, on the downloaded calls. So at least to help people or no. It will be, if you can grab the link, then they can, it takes a second. Yeah. So if you want well, just to help the people who are in here, right. Cause I mean, I feel bad, right. I want to make sure people get value. Yeah, if it if you can copy that and throw it in there. Otherwise, you can copy it and send it to me, and I'll. I'm gonna send it to you, and you let me yeah. know if it works. You know. Sure. Yeah, and I can. What I'll do for everyone is for the people that participate or actually showed up for the webinar, you'll get that day after. You know, thanks for attending. It all include the recording as well as those those audio recordings, so you can hear the the full conversation on both sides. Totally. I appreciate it. Thank you, Crystal, Thank for you. giving me the opportunity to come by and help. I mean, if you guys need, need anything, let me know. I'm here to help. Perfect. And Sounds Crystal, great. you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.